Hello, this is Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park. This is our second week out looking for wildflowers in our celebration of our native woodland wildflowers here in the park. At this time of year, the sun is coming through these trees that haven't quite opened up their leaves yet, and that's why these wildflowers have a chance to bloom, because they can get that sunlight. As these leaves begin to open up on the trees, they're gonna shade out these wildflowers and they will die back. And then you'll need to go farther up in elevation where the trees haven't leafed out yet to find the wildflowers. So it's a little bit of a race. The flowers are trying to keep ahead of those trees that are leafing out. So we're seeing some wildflowers right here today. This is at the lower elevation in the park. This is one of the lower elevation trails. This is the Rose River Fire Road. So we're at the boundary of the park. And we're going to walk our way up in elevation just a little bit. The first flowers that we're seeing just as we leave the parking lot are some beautiful violets. Uh, these are native flowers and there are many species of violets in the park. The interesting thing is they're not always violet color. This one is. This is our common blue violet and it's one of the earlier ones that you will see here. Uh, they're an interesting flower. They've got a little bit of a, a runway for bees and other pollinators to find their way into the back of the plant where the ne nectar is. They've got this runway that I'm talking about or a series of little purple stripes on a white background. So it's like they can see that. Here's where you land, land there and follow those stripes right back to where the nectar is. Meantime, they get some pollen on their body and the next time they go to a violet flower, they pollinate it. So pretty, pretty nice uh, system for the violets. We talked about how violets are not always violet, and we have some yellow ones right here. These are the smooth yellow violets, and they're a little bit smaller, and they're growing and opening right at about the same time as our common blue violets. So we'll, as we go along today, we'll see if we can see any other colors of violets. Uh, we also have some white violets in the park, so we'll look for some of those as well. One of the flowers that I really look forward to in the springtime is star chickweed. And it's because it's one of the earlier native woodland flowers, but it also comes in a nice woodland bouquet. So it's like this nature is saying, here, look at, look at this. And you just can't help it. You have to look. Um, star chickweed is uh, related to the chickweeds that you might have growing in your lawns at home. But uh, those ones are not native, those are, are uh, uh, from other places outside of the U.S. The star chickweed is a native woodland uh, flower. And what's cool about it is it looks like from a distance it's got ten petals, these little white petals here, but there are actually only five, and they're just very deeply cut, and um, so it looks like ten. And that helps you to know what family of flowers the star chickweed is in. This is in a family called the pink family. And that doesn't have anything to do with the color. Uh, pinking is a way of cutting or, or making a cleft into something. If, if, you're, uh, uh, see, if you like to, to do sewing, uh, you may have some pinking shears at home. And those have a zigzag tooth on them. And that's pinking. That's kind of cutting a, a, a cleft in your material all the way across. So these are members of the pink family, even though they're not pink. We have another beautiful flower that is one of my favorites uh, growing right nearby the star chickweed here, and that is called Dutchman's Britches. 
and that's right over here, it will have stems of flowers that are hanging down like someone hang, hung out their, uh, their bloomers on a line. And so Dutchman's Bridges, beautiful white flowers, and they only bloom in the springtime as our other woodland ephemerals like star chickweed. These ephemerals, it means that they are only here for a short time and then they go away. And these flowers are only here in the springtime and they will try to get pollinated. Uh, the flowers will then fall off, the petals will fall off, the seeds will form, and then you won't see those flowers again until next spring. So these are only here for a short time and that's why it's great to come and look for them in the springtime right now. When you're out for a stroll in the park, it's good to watch where you're putting your feet. Sometimes there will be things nearby that you won't even notice because they're not necessarily blooming, but they're going to bloom later. So look closely as you walk, walk slowly and you'll see more. And when I was walking slowly, I saw some beautiful little umbrellas, uh, green umbrellas poking up out of the ground. And these May apple plants are not ready to bloom yet. They won't be blooming for about another month, but they're just starting to come up. So it's kind of cool to take a look at them. And here they are right here, starting to open up. They'll come starting like this, just pushing up like a, looks like a mushroom coming up, but they're green. And uh, they're not mushrooms, of course, they're, they're green plants. And you'll see several of them here coming up. And as the weeks go by, they will begin to unfurl those umbrella-like leaves at the top. And underneath, there will be a single uh, creamy, waxy white uh, flower hanging down. There may be two on, on a plant. And uh, those won't be blooming, as I said, for another month or so. But here they are, just coming out of the ground though, so watch where you put your feet when you're looking for wildflowers. We have another one of my favorite spring flowers here, and I guess I should say at this point that they're all my favorites. So, <laughs> this one is called Bloodroot. It's got a beautiful white flower, and if you look at the stem, the, the leaf is behind the stem and is kind of curled around. And that's what the leaf does. As that flower is coming up, uh, in the bud, the leaf will wrap around almost in a protective way. And as the flower stem continues to grow up and open, the leaf will, will pull back. Bloodroot gets its name because under the ground, its root is a, is a fairly thick uh, root. And it, when it's broken open, uh, will release a reddish kind of a dye. Uh, and people use that actually for, for a dye. Now, now that I've said that, I want to make sure that nobody's going out there and digging up our bloodroot plants or any other flowers. In Shenandoah National Park, all of our wildflowers are protected, so please leave them where they are. Purchase your wildflowers from reputable um, uh, dealers, catalogs, etc. Et but do not dig them up in uh, national parks. In addition to this beautiful bloodroot right here beside me, there's a, a group of them also growing uh, behind me. And while I sat here, I noticed just looking down on this side, there's a, a stem coming up with three equal sized leaflets coming out at the same place. And it's the uh, stem of a trillium, the large flowered trillium. They're not blooming yet, but this one is several inches tall. And in another week or two, there will be a beautiful white flower, one of the, the, the prettiest flowers in the park, one of the largest of our native woodland wildflowers. But the trilliums aren't blooming yet, so wait another week or so uh, and you'll start to see those. We found a nice wildflower right here behind this log. 
This is called the cutleaf toothwort. This is another native woodland wildflower just starting to bloom. It's toothwort because the leaves are very narrow and they've got little teeth on the edges of them. And wort is just another name for a plant. Um, and this toothwort is um, actually a member of the mustard family. Mustard flowers can be different colors. There's many different types of mustards out there. The toothworts uh, uh, show that they're a member of the mustard family. If you look closely at the open flower, they only have four petals. And most, or I should say, yeah, the majority of flowers that you're going to see out there will have five or more petals. So four is kind of an unusual number in wildflowers, but members of the mustard family will have, will have four. Something else that's interesting about the toothwort is that it is uh, the larval host plant for one of our native butterflies here in the park, the West Virginia white. It's an uncommon butterfly and uh, its caterpillars depend on the leaves of toothwort and will eat those before they uh, metamorphose into adult butterflies. As adult butterflies can only sip nectar, they can't eat anymore. They don't have chewing mouth parts. But, um, so they'll drink nectar from a variety of plants. But as a caterpillar, the West Virginia white needs toothwort. What's happening though in many of our forests across the eastern U.S. is that a non-native plant called garlic mustard has come in and become invasive. That means it's, it's taken over some places where our native plants are also growing and will crowd them out. And so sometimes the West Virginia white butterfly is fooled into laying its eggs on the garlic mustard instead of the toothwort. And those caterpillars, when they hatch out and feed on the garlic mustard, they will never survive long enough to become adults. So it is a problem where our already uncommon butterflies are having their populations impacted by an invasive plant that wasn't um, a native plant that was here uh, a long, long time. So look for toothwort. Um, there's still plenty of it here in our national parks. Sometimes when you're walking in the woods, you might not see an animal or a bird, but you may see evidence uh, that they were here. So we have some evidence right here of some bird activity. This tree uh, apparently died. I don't know when or how, but uh, later on, there will be insects that will go inside there and, and live and make their homes. And then our woodpeckers will go in there and try to get those insects out. And our largest woodpecker, the pileated woodpecker, is very good at chipping big holes into trees to go after those insects. And you can see the evidence at the base of the tree and all of those wood chips that it pulls out in order to get to those insects inside. So. There was a nice big meal in there for some pileated woodpecker. A fallen tree across the trail may look like an obstacle and just be something for you to step over. But if you stop and take a look, you can see the whole cycle of life going on What's happening in this forest is happening right here on this fallen tree. If you look closely, you may see a blue-green color, and that's not a dye that anybody has put on that log. This is a fungus, and that's its natural color. It's called a blue-green stain or just a blue-green fungus, and it will respond to moisture. It really likes the when it rains and the, the moisture begins to soften this, this tree, that fungus just goes right in there and starts to work and continues to soften and break down the fibers in that tree. While that's happening, there are beetles that are living in that tree and they're, they're eating it from the inside. And if you look closely at the log, you may see what we call galleries, which are little channels that the beetles make. And they're all different artistically designed uh, uh, squiggles on this log. And if you look a little farther, you might see some channels that are deeper and wider, and those are made by woodpeckers that are going after those insects 
that are inside that log. So this is a, a full uh, uh, gallery of things that are happening here in the woods. And eventually, and not too long from now, this rotting tree is going to uh, become part of the soil and help to provide nutrients for more flowering plants that you can see when you come to visit the park in the springtime. Well, thanks for joining us today on our second wildflower walk. Now, today you might have noticed that we saw some of the same flowers that we saw last week, but last week the flowers were just starting to open up, and this week we saw a lot more fully open flowers and flowers that were blooming a little farther up in elevation. Join me next week for our third episode where we'll be at another boundary trail in the park, and I'll just bet you that there will be some more flowers blooming, more variety, and a lot more in numbers. So. Until then, this is Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park.